Hey everyone, Joe here. Welcome to part 12 of the Pro Tools First Pro course. In this video, you're gonna be finding out how to mix your vocals in Pro Tools First to sound clear and professional. Before we start mixing, the most important thing is that you've got a great recording to begin with. There's no amount of mixing that's gonna make a terrible recording sound great. There are some things we can do to fix certain issues, um, and that's sometimes what mixing is about, but it's best to focus on getting a fantastic recording beforehand. Now, I've brought up this, pro, uh, this podcast session again. If you saw the editing uh, part of the series, you'll have seen this. It's a good recording. Um, there's a little bit too much reverb on, on the recording, and this is something, especially if you're mixing for other people, and mixing podcasts in particular, you're gonna get this. We've also got another track on here, The Guest. It's not recorded quite so well. Um, we're gonna have a little go at mixing that as well. The first thing to do is getting the levels balanced. Before we add any plugins at all, I wanna get these levels right. So let's have a listen to both of them first and see how the balance is. So for me, it's those three characteristics in the recruitment business owners around learning to you and Rama out of interest. Self development well, I, piece. I, I think, right, as we know, there's so many people doing this job. And there's the so guest many... seems slightly louder. I'm going to bring him down a bit. To you and Rama, out of interest, the self development well, I, piece. I, I think, right, as we know, there's so many people doing this job and there's so yeah. many people trying to be the best. And it's how do you. The, the businesses in another like three, four, five, ten 100%. years, I think. It's, yeah, like. So we've got a nice balance there just to get things started. But now we want to get things, uh, get things sounding nice. So. Open up an EQ, click on the first the first insert, and and even when I'm using Pro Tools, the the full version, I still use this this EQ a lot. It's it's a really solid EQ. It's got everything you need to shape the tone of your recordings. So let's just listen to to the host first. And welcome to the recruitment mentors. The first podcast. thing we want to do is he is bring in. A high pass filter. So we're going to bring that one down there and just cut some of the low end off. You you won't even be able to hear this these these kind of sub bass frequencies and the low bass, but it's just this low end rumble energy vibrations that you just don't need in there. So we're going to cut that right off to begin with. Welcome to the Recruitment Mentors podcast. My name is Hisham Azuz. Today, and then secondly, I want to focus on that mid range where we're getting a lot of that uh, roominess, kind of boxiness in the middle there. Be around 500 to 1,000 hertz, I think. Welcome to the Recruitment Mentors podcast. My name is Hisham Azuz. Today, I'm really excited yeah, to be joined by Harry right. Thornton. So let's bring some of that down. He is the Director of Global Sales at Aroma Solutions. And tighten that. Harry graduated university in 2015 and started his career in sales within an independent classic car and supercar dealership selling... And when you make these changes to the EQ, it's going to change the overall level. And we've got, the no we've got a nice balance on the level already, so... I don't want the EQ to change that. So you can use the output of your EQ to adjust. If you Welcome see- Welcome to the Recruitment Mentors podcast. My name is- Maybe two or three uh, dB quieter now. So let's just bring that back up. Welcome to the Recruitment Mentors podcast. My name is Hisham Azuz. Today, I'm really excited to be joined more by well. Harry Thornton, who is the director of global sales at Aroma Solutions. Harry graduated university in 2015 and started his career in- It's sounding a bit nicer now already. We're going to give it a little bit of low end, um, particularly for a solo vocal. If I was mix, uh, mixing a song with a bass and everything, I probably wouldn't give it too much extra low end, if any, um, depending on the recording. But for this, we want it to sound nice and warm and intimate. Welcome to the Recruitment Mentors podcast. My name is Hisham Azuz. Today, I'm really excited around. to be joined by Harry Thornton, who is the director 80, of Global Sales at Aroma Solutions. Harry graduated university in 2015 and started his career in sales within an independent classic car and supercar dealership selling cars to high... Okay, typically I also like to brighten things up a little bit in the top end um, across the board just to make things a little bit more crispy. You've got to be careful though because the, the S sounds that people say or the SH sounds can sound very harsh and or sibilant as it's called. So if it's already a very sibilant recording you might not want to add any top end there um, or, or or just just be careful with Harry it. Harry graduated university in 2015 and started his career I'm in gonna sales. I'm going to add a little bit of brightness, just independent a, class a couple of dB around 4,000 4, hertz. But I'm going to be putting on a de-esser, 
as well. So the, the sections where it gets uh, too harsh with that sibilant sound, the deesser brings um, those high frequencies down. So if you go to dynamics uh, and go for the deesser, and what this does, <clears throat> if you click on high frequencies only, it's basically like a compressor. It squashes the, the level down, um, but only for those high frequencies. So, who is the director of global sales at Aroma Solutions? Harry graduated university in 2015 and, and started can, his career in sales within an independent classic car and supercar dealership selling. You can hear and see that that level is bouncing down when when it uh, when the speaker does an S or a sh sound. Who is the director of global sales at Aroma? And it's just making it sound a little bit less harsh, basically. Alternatively, if the whole thing. Uh, is sounding a little bit harsh uh, in, in, in general, a little bit bright, you could just bring bring down the top end uh, on the EQ and that might be enough. It really uh, does depend on the recording and you need, just need to use your ears really. There's a lot of dynamic range on this vocal performance. You want to smooth that out by using a compressor. So click on your next insert in your track, go to dynamics and find the compressor, the Dyn uh, Dynamic 3 compressor. So hit play again and see where um, uh, where the level's coming up to. And we're going to set the threshold. So on the loud the loud bits, uh, where we're speaking a bit louder, it wants to activate that compressor to squash it down a little bit. But use your ears as well. You'll be able to hear when the louder bits start getting squashed down especially after you've done this for a little while. Welcome to the Recruitment Mentors podcast. My name is Hisham Mazouz. Today, I'm really excited to be joined by Harry okay. Thornton, who is the director of... So when it goes over that orange line, just using just using the visual representation to, to help to understand, um, that's when it's going to be squashing down the level. You can see the line uh, goes a little bit less steep. And the ratio is how much it's going to be reducing it by. So if we've got a ratio of three to one for every one dB, one decibel that goes over that threshold, it's going to reduce it by three dB. Welcome to the Recruitment Mentors podcast. My name is Keisha Mazouz. Today, I'm really excited to be joined by Harry Thornton, who is the director of Global... Now, the attack and the release, the attack is how fast the compressor kicks in. So we don't want it to sound really squashed and obvious, but... Uh, we do want it to be catching um, catching those peaks. So I'm going to go for a fast attack. And then the release is how quickly it goes back to the, the, the uncompressed level once it's gone back below the threshold. So leave that there for now. And just smooth out, um, smooth out the reduction, the level reduction with a bit of soft knee. Welcome to the Recruitment Mentors podcast. My name is okay, Hisham Azuz. Today I'm now. really excited to be joined by Harry squashed. Thornton, who is the director of global sales at Aroma Solutions. Harry graduated university in 2015 and started... Let's hear it now before and after one in an area where it's particularly spiking in level. Welcome to the Recruitment Mentors podcast. My name is Hisham Azuz. Today, I'm really excited to be joined by Harry Thornton. Welcome to the Recruitment Mentors podcast. My name is Hisham Azuz. Today, I'm really excited to be joined by Harry Thornton. So it smoothed things out. It's sounding more professional, more pleasant to listen to. Let's take a quick look at the guest vocal as well. I think it's a really interesting. And we're going to bring in that EQ again. In fact, we can start, if you hold control and, and, and drag, we can start with um, with with the EQ that we've used on the other channel, but we're going to make, make a, really a few changes. I think it's a really interesting question, right? Um, because you, you get this question a lot and you hear... That sort of horrible boxiness is a little bit lower on this recording. So let's bring it down there. I think there. it's a really interesting question, right? Um, because you, you get this question a lot and you hear this question a lot, right? As I'm sure you know. Um, but I'm going to brighten I, this up a bit. Everyone talks around, you know, being money motivated or um, hardworking. And, all and then again, just for those really harsh um, sibilant sounds, we're going to be using the DSO. I think it's a really interesting question, right? Um, because you, you get this question a lot and you hear this question a lot, right? As I'm sure you know. Um, going to add the compressor on the track as well. 
quite a lot of dynamic range on this track, a lot of spikes in the level. So you might have to go a little bit harsher on the compression. I think it's a really interesting question, right? Um, because but we don't you, want it sounding you get this question a lot and you hear this question a lot, right? As I'm sure you know. Um, but I, everyone talks... I think it's a really interesting question, right? Um, because you, you get this question a lot and you hear this question. I think it's a really interesting question, right? Um, because you, you get this question a lot and you hear this question. A so that's sounding much better, uh, nice and smooth, not so harsh. The, the de-esser, it's going to depend on your recording. Um, whether you need to use it or not, but pretty much any vocal recording is going to need to use uh, EQ and compression to some extent. And even if you're mixing your um, sung vocals to music, for example, the fundamentals are still the same. You're still going to be using the EQ to remove um, certain frequencies that don't sound nice and you'd be listening to it along with, with the music uh, to get the right kind of balance. Um, and then the compression as well. Overcompressed rarely sounds good on vocals. So you do want to leave it subtle, especially when it's something, uh, some kind of solo vocal performance or, or dialogue where it's a little bit obvious. You can get away with a little bit more compression when mixing to music normally. But I've got a huge amount of videos on this channel that go much more into detail with mixing. Now that we've got things sounding great, I'm going to show you how to export that audio into the correct format so that it's ready for upload, which we'll be going over in the next part. But let me know in the comments section below, what vocals are you mixing? Are you, are you mixing sung vocals, you're singing, uh, are you mixing a, a podcast? It'd be great to know what you're working on. But as always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next part.